Today we dive into a shocking story. A teenage groom murdered shortly after marrying a 75-year-old trans bridezilla. Join us as we uncover the unusual dynamics of this marriage, the tensions that arose, and the deadly outcome that left a family and community reeling. Braxton Townsend, just 18, was a recent high school graduate from the small town of Searchlight, Nevada. He had always been drawn to adventure and, though he came from modest means, was eager to explore a world filled with luxury and excitement. Those who knew Braxton described him as a young man with easygoing charm and a magnetic personality. Friends and family recall that he'd always dreamt of escaping his ordinary life and stepping into something far grander. That dream became a reality when he met Pat Brunn. They met at a lavish charity event in Las Vegas, where Braxton was a waiter. Pat, a 75-year-old transgender millionaire, had recently transitioned and was known for her extravagant lifestyle and bold personality. Braxton was instantly captivated by her confidence and the world she represented. The two struck up an unlikely connection, and Pat quickly took Braxton under her wing, introducing him to a life he had only seen in movies. For the first time, he had access to designer clothes, high-end restaurants, and glamorous parties. With every outing, Braxton grew more excited about what his life could become, feeling like he'd finally found a path to the lifestyle he had always imagined. Soon after meeting, Pat proposed to Braxton, and despite the significant age gap, he eagerly accepted. Friends noted that Braxton saw Pat as a ticket to a new beginning, envisioning a future where he no longer had to worry about money or limitations. The couple's engagement quickly became the talk of Seven Hills, their gated community in Henderson, Nevada. The neighbors had mixed feelings, with some expressing skepticism about Braxton's motives, while others marveled at Pat's boldness. As their February 2019 wedding date approached, Braxton was swept up in the excitement. He spent days picking out his tuxedo, even sharing his choices with friends on social media. Pat spared no expense, reserving an upscale venue and arranging for a designer cake and exclusive catering. Braxton, however, seemed anxious in his final days leading up to the wedding. Friends noticed he was quieter than usual, though he brushed off their concerns. He seemed to be wrestling with feelings about the life he was stepping into and the responsibilities that came with it. In private, Braxton confided in close friends that he wondered if he was ready to marry someone so much older, especially someone with such a demanding personality. Yet, he also felt indebted to Pat for offering him a lifestyle he'd only dreamed of. The anticipation built as the wedding day neared, and Braxton tried to push aside his doubts, determined to enjoy the life he thought he wanted. It was only a matter of days before he would be stepping into a marriage that promised luxury, but a cost he never anticipated. It was late February 2019, and Henderson, Nevada, was in the middle of an unseasonably chilly morning when the search for 18-year-old Braxton Townsend began. He hadn't been seen for days, and friends noticed his sudden absence. But it was Pat Brun's housekeeper, Maria Delgado, who first realized something was terribly wrong. As she went through her daily routine in the grand multi-million dollar mansion, she noticed Braxton's belongings untouched and Pat acting unusually distant. On the morning of February 27th, Maria entered the kitchen and detected a strange smell near the sink. Suspicious, she looked closer and noticed what seemed like dark stains in the drain. At first, she assumed it was just food residue, but something didn't feel right. Maria, worried by Pat's silence about Braxton's whereabouts, decided to call the police. Her voice shook as she explained to the dispatcher what she had seen, describing her reaction as a mixture of fear and unease, saying she felt something awful had happened. When the police arrived at the gated community of Seven Hills, they quickly took Maria's report seriously. The quiet neighborhood rarely saw much police activity, and neighbors began to notice the commotion. Investigators arrived in marked patrol cars, drawing curious glances from residents who knew Pat Brunn as a longtime fixture in the area. Within minutes, the officers entered the kitchen and immediately noticed the odor Maria had reported. As police examined the kitchen, they spotted faint, unusual residue leading from the sink, sparking further suspicion. When they conducted a closer investigation of the drain, they began to suspect they might be dealing with something far more sinister than a routine missing persons case. Their suspicions deepened as forensic experts took over, carefully collecting samples from the drain for testing. The situation quickly turned from a quiet inquiry into what would become one of the most chilling investigations the community had ever seen, raising immediate concerns about what really happened to Braxton. When Henderson police detectives Mark Ellison and Tatiana Prud arrived at the upscale gated community, it was clear this wasn't an ordinary call. 
The mansion where 18-year-old Braxton Townsend had been living with 75-year-old Pat Braun was quiet, though several luxury cars sat parked in the drive. The home, a modern architectural gem with high ceilings and vast glass windows, seemed out of place in a situation that now looked more like a crime scene than a residence. Detectives Ellison and Prud, both veterans in the department, were known for their steady handling of even the most difficult cases. On the morning of February 27, 2019, they entered the spacious kitchen where housekeeper Maria Delgado had discovered the troubling evidence. The smell Maria had mentioned was faint but noticeable, and an unusual dark residue stained the sink and drain, raising immediate red flags. The forensic team arrived soon after and began carefully documenting the scene, using high-powered cameras to photograph every angle of the kitchen. They also swabbed the sink area and took samples from the drain. While the rest of the kitchen appeared spotless, the drain itself looked suspiciously clean, as though something had been recently washed down. This, along with the stains, led detectives to suspect a cover-up attempt. Detective Prud, taking careful notes, observed that the resident's air of wealth seemed at odds with the scene unfolding inside. The detectives learned from neighbors that Pat Braun, though reclusive, was known for her bold personality and eccentric lifestyle. In recent days, several had noticed raised voices from inside the home, particularly heated arguments between Pat and Brax. Forensic investigators used a tool called a drain scope to investigate deeper inside the pipes, attempting to recover any remains left behind. What they found confirmed their fears. Small bone fragments and traces of tissue were detected and later matched to Braxton's DNA. Though the disposal had ground down much of the evidence, Enough remained to confirm the tragic truth. Braxton's remains had been processed and flushed through the kitchen's garbage disposal, an unsettling method that made detectives consider the extent of Pat Braun's desperation or rage. With this new grim discovery, detectives Ellison and Prud began piecing together a timeline and motive, realizing they were dealing with a highly calculated act. As the investigation intensified, they wondered what could have driven someone to commit such a gruesome act in this mansion that now housed more secrets than luxuries. The first suspect police interviewed was Pat Braun herself. At 75, Pat, formerly Patrick, was an eccentric figure in the Henderson community, a wealthy individual who had come out as transgender and transitioned to living as a woman later in life. Known for her bold personality, she was both admired and resented by her neighbors. After Braxton Townsend's disappearance, her usual confidence seemed to waver. The police noted that Pat, often seen dressed in designer brands and known to host opulent dinners for those in her inner circle, now seemed strangely subdued. It was early March 2019 when detectives Mark Ellison and Tatiana Prud brought Pat into the Henderson Police Department for a formal interview. Sitting in a small, sterile interrogation room, Pat was visibly agitated as they began questioning her. Pat insisted she had nothing to do with Braxton's death. She claimed that her relationship with Braxton was simply misunderstood. Pat explained that she wanted to rescue Braxton from his small-town life in Searchlight, Nevada, offering him a luxurious lifestyle in exchange for his companionship and sexual prowess. Pat recounted how the two had met at an upscale event in Las Vegas and how Braxton had been charmed by her stories of wealth and adventure. Within a month, she said, they were engaged, and Pat spent generously on a quick wedding, buying Braxton a gold Rolex, expensive suits, and other gifts to help him fit in. But Pat admitted that her relationship with Braxton had recently turned rocky. Friends of the couple confirmed that their marriage, though glamorous, was fraught with arguments. Neighbors recalled loud confrontations coming from the mansion, some even involving threats. As detectives continued to press her, Pat's frustration grew. She told them she felt used by Braxton, claiming he only wanted her money. She believed he was planning to leave her and possibly take a portion of her wealth with him, which infuriated her. Pat hinted at having suspicions about Braxton's fidelity, suggesting he was in contact with her former financial advisor, Robert Bobby Michelson, a man with whom she had a long, complicated history. The detectives noticed that Pat's demeanor shifted from defensive to cool as they dug deeper. When they asked her point-blank if she had harmed Braxton, Pat scoffed, maintaining her innocence but refusing to meet their gaze. She hinted that if Braxton had crossed any lines, he would have to face the consequences of betraying her. It was a vague statement but enough to suggest to detectives that Pat harbored a powerful sense of ownership over Braxton, one that may have pushed her toward drastic actions. As the interview ended, Detective Prout noted in her report that Pat's responses were intriguing. While not a confession, her words seemed to hold an eerie truth about her feelings toward her young husband. Police left with mounting suspicion, knowing they had to investigate Pat further if they hoped to uncover the truth behind Braxton's disappearance. 
The next person of interest was Robert Bobby Michelson, Pat Braun's former financial advisor and longtime ex-lover. Known to have shared both a personal and professional history with Pat, Bobby had been close to her for decades. They'd met when Bobby was only 20, beginning what he described as a love affair that lasted for years, first as Pat's lover, then later as her financial advisor. After he aged out of being her lover, he helped her manage her fortune as she grew older, working tirelessly to make her assets grow. But after Pat's marriage to Braxton, Bobby was unceremoniously fired. Rumors swirled that Pat suspected him of double-dealing with her money, though no charges were ever brought against him. By early March 2019, detectives Mark Ellison and Tajana Prout had gathered enough evidence to call Bobby in for questioning. He arrived at the Henderson Police Department looking tense but calm, dressed sharply in a Hugo Boss suit as if to assert he was still the professional he once was. As he sat across from the detectives, Bobby quickly displayed a complex mix of emotions. He admitted to feeling hurt and betrayed by Pat's sudden decision to fire him, claiming she turned on him over nothing in favor of her young husband, Braxton. As the detectives pressed, Bobby revealed his disdain for Braxton. He described Braxton as a gold digger who had taken advantage of Pat's wealth and vulnerability. Bobby said he had tried to warn Pat that Braxton was only interested in her money, but she wouldn't listen. As he spoke, his frustration was evident even as he tried to keep his emotions in check. When asked if he had contact with Braxton, Bobby hesitated, then admitted they'd crossed paths more than once. He said Braxton had approached him seeking advice, claiming he was unhappy and wanted a way out of the marriage. Bobby didn't elaborate but hinted that he discouraged Braxton from abandoning Pat. Detectives noticed that Bobby's tone grew defensive as they continued the interview. When asked if he knew about Braxton's disappearance, Bobby raised his hands in protest, insisting he had nothing to do with it. But as the questions intensified, his answers became more clipped. He said he wasn't a violent person and suggested the police focus on other suspects instead of wasting time on him. As they wrapped up the interview, the detectives were left with a clearer picture of Bobby's potential motives. He felt scorned and overlooked after Pat's new marriage, and his career as her advisor was now over. He believed he'd been loyal, but Pat had discarded him for a younger partner. Detective Prout noted that Bobby had the kind of grudge that could, in some cases, lead to drastic actions, especially given his years of loyalty to Pat. While Bobby left the station visibly angry, claiming he was innocent, his answers left detectives wondering, had his resentment for Braxton been enough to drive him to violence, or was he simply a bitter ex-advisor caught in a complex web of motives and shifting loyalties? In mid-March 2019, just as detectives were struggling to find conclusive evidence, a shocking twist emerged. The weather was typical for Henderson, Nevada, dry and warm, with only a few wispy clouds over the gated community. Where Braxton Townsend's story had taken such a dark turn, investigators had returned to the mansion one last time, searching for anything they might have missed. During a routine sweep of the bathroom, Detective Tana P.R. noticed something odd beneath a loose floor tile near the vanity. It was a small leather-bound notebook wedged in a way that suggested someone had hidden it in haste. When she flipped through the pages, she realized it was Braxton's private journal. The entries inside offered a rare glimpse into his life with Pat Braun and revealed the young man's increasing disillusionment with his new marriage. Braxton's writings detailed a growing fear of Pat's controlling nature. He described her as increasingly possessive and unwilling to let him have any independence. In addition, he detailed his disgust with having sex with Pat, who still had male genitalia. One of the last entries was especially telling, it mentioned a plan to escape. Braxton wrote that he intended to leave Pat and take a significant sum of money from her, noting that he'd already shared his plan with someone he thought he could trust, Bobby Michelson, Pat's ex-advisor and former lover. Realizing the significance of the journal, Detective Mark Ellison called in forensics to carefully examine the pages for fingerprints or any additional clues. With Braxton's intention to leave confirmed in his own handwriting, the detectives now had a clearer motive and a stronger reason to question Bobby. The journal was the missing piece, a clear indicator that Braxton had seen Pat's wealth as a ticket to the life he wanted, but at a personal cost he hadn't anticipated. Detectives were left stunned by this revelation. They knew Bobby had likely been aware of Braxton's intentions to take money from Pat, but the question remained, had Bobby told Pat about Braxton's plans? If so, this revelation could have been what tipped Pat over the edge. As detectives continued their investigation, they considered that Bobby's knowledge of the plan could have been shared with Pat out of spite, possibly making him a critical part of a deadly chain of events. Armed with Braxton's journal, 
Police intensified their focus on both Bobby and Pat, now more convinced than ever that this love triangle had darker consequences than anyone had realized. In late March 2019, detectives turned their attention to a new suspect, Deborah Helly Braun, Pat's estranged daughter. At 50, Deborah had lived a quieter life compared to her mother, who had made headlines for her lavish spending and for transitioning to become a woman in her 70s. Deborah, however, had long resented Pat's transition and the string of younger partners Pat often brought into their family orbit. Living in nearby Summerland, Nevada, Deborah was known for her blunt personality. Friends described her as intense, fiercely protective of her family's legacy, and not one to hold back her opinions. Tensions with Braxton had started from the beginning. At Pat and Braxton's wedding, Deborah made it clear she didn't approve of the marriage, seeing Braxton as someone who was after her mother's fortune. During an interrogation with detectives Tana P.R. and Mark Ellison, Deborah was asked about her last interactions with Braxton. She admitted that she found the marriage to be a joke and had warned Pat that marrying someone so young was a mistake. Despite her strong disapproval, Deborah claimed she hadn't been involved in Braxton's death and that her warnings were out of concern for her mother's well-being. Throughout the questioning, Deborah remained composed but visibly annoyed. When pressed about her relationship with Braxton, she finally revealed that they had argued a few weeks before his disappearance. She stated Braxton had flaunted his new lifestyle, boasting about future plans to travel to places like Paris and New York and even mentioning a desire to secure some of Pat's assets for himself. Deborah expressed frustration at his attitude, saying it was clear he was using Pat. Detectives noted her resentment, but Deborah insisted she'd let her mother handle the situation herself, stating, it's not my place to interfere. Detectives were particularly interested in how Deborah had seemingly gained specific information about Braxton's intentions to access Pat's money. Deborah admitted that her concerned mother had confided in her about Braxton's behavior. However, Deborah maintained that she hadn't taken any action beyond advising her mother to rethink the marriage. Despite her calm demeanor, detectives sensed underlying tension. The journal entry recovered from Braxton's bathroom hinted that he saw Deborah as an obstacle to his plans. Detectives confronted her with this, which visibly rattled her. For the first time, Deborah hesitated but dismissed the journal as a teenager's fantasy. Her reaction, however, only made detectives more suspicious, and they decided to keep Deborah on their radar, wondering if she might have played a bigger role in the conflict between Pat and Braxton. As their interview ended, detectives P.R. and Ellison left with mixed feelings. Deborah's motive seemed strong, but they couldn't be sure if it was enough to link her to the crime directly. Still, Deborah remained a potential key player in the tangled web surrounding Braxton's tragic end. By late March 2019, police had gathered enough evidence to conclude that Pat Braun was responsible for Braxton's death. The final piece was Braxton's journal, found tucked away in the master bathroom. In it, he detailed plans to leave Pat and take a large sum of her money to start a new life. The journal hinted he had confided in Bobby Michelson, Pat's former financial advisor, who seemed more than willing to betray Pat by sharing Braxton's intentions with her. This revelation was enough to push Pat into a rage she couldn't contain. In the days leading up to the murder, Pat felt the growing resentment and betrayal. She had lavished Braxton with gifts, taken him to exclusive events, and brought him into her upscale, gated world of Seven Hills in Henderson, Nevada. The thought that he planned to leave her and might take a portion of her wealth was too much for her to accept. Friends later said that she began behaving erratically, showing more control over Braxton's every move and making frequent calls to him throughout the day to check in. One night in early March, after reading Braxton's latest journal entries, Pat reached a breaking point, driven by rage. She confronted him in the mansion's kitchen. A heated argument ensued, with Pat accusing Braxton of being a user and a fraud. When Braxton tried to leave, Pat acted in a brutal and methodical manner. She overpowered him, eventually killing him by forcibly holding him down, rendering him unconscious before dismembering and liquefying his remains in the garbage disposal, a chilling process that took hours. Pat felt a dark sense of relief after the act. She believed she had protected her dignity and fortune from Braxton's betrayal. In her mind, she had prevented him from using her any further. She meticulously cleaned the kitchen, disposing of any evidence of Braxton's remains. But detectives weren't fooled by the lack of a body. After analyzing remnants recovered from the disposal and connecting the journal entries to Pat's obsessive behavior, detectives put the pieces together. Surveillance footage from local stores showed Pat purchasing cleaning supplies and heavy-duty garbage bags just days before Braxton's disappearance. For detectives Tana Pryor and Mark Ellison, 
The evidence was conclusive. On March 29th, police arrived at Pat's mansion to make the arrest. Pat answered the door with a composed smile, but her face turned pale as they placed her in handcuffs. She was initially silent, but as they led her to the police car, her calm demeanor broke. Witnesses described her as shocked, almost disbelieving that her careful plan had failed. Braxton's family, devastated but relieved, expressed gratitude to the police for bringing justice. They held a small memorial for Braxton, mourning his dreams cut short by the woman who had promised him a life of luxury. As for Pat, she was left to confront the reality of her actions, a once wealthy socialite now reduced to a criminal awaiting trial. At her trial in late January 2020, Pat Braun's defense team presented an unusual strategy known as the transgender defense. Her lawyer, Alexander Grant, 56, a well-known defense attorney with a reputation for leveraging unconventional arguments, contended that Pat's recent transition had led to significant psychological distress, exacerbating feelings of rejection and betrayal. Alexander argued that Pat's decision to kill Braxton was not premeditated, but rather an emotional reaction driven by her unique situation and heightened vulnerability as a transgender woman facing abandonment. This defense, though controversial, found some traction with the jury. The prosecution, led by state attorney Leah Michaels, 52, argued Pat had methodically planned the murder, pointing to her documented history of possessive control over Braxton and the calculated disposal of his remains. Michaels, known for his firm but straightforward approach, presented evidence of Pat's erratic behavior in the days leading up to Braxton's death, citing surveillance footage and Braxton's journal entries as proof of her obsessive need to dominate him. Michaels urged the jury to consider Braxton's life and the brutal act that ended it, dismissing Pat's defense as an attempt to evade full accountability. Despite Michaels's efforts, Pat's defense gained sympathy from some jury members, leading to a reduced charge. On January 30th, the jury found Pat guilty of manslaughter rather than first-degree murder. The sentence handed down was 15 years in prison, with eligibility for parole in eight years. When the verdict was read, Pat appeared relieved but visibly shaken. She expressed no remorse, maintaining that her actions stemmed from feeling manipulated and abandoned, a narrative her lawyer had emphasized throughout the trial. The reduced sentence devastated Braxton's family, who felt justice had not been fully served. His mother, Andrea Townsend, called the outcome a travesty, saying the court had minimized the value of her son's life. Friends and community members shared in the sentiment, questioning how such a gruesome crime could result in a lighter sentence. As Pat was led out of the courtroom, her expression remained stoic. Those close to her said she felt vindicated, as though the lighter sentence justified her belief that Braxton had wronged her. For many, the trial left lingering feelings of injustice, a bittersweet close to the tragic story that had shocked Henderson and beyond. After Pat Braun's trial concluded, her life changed dramatically. Sentenced to 15 years in prison for the manslaughter of her husband, Pat was moved to the Florence McClure Women's Correctional Center in Las Vegas. Known for its high security, the facility housed many female inmates, including those convicted of serious crimes. Pat had to adjust a life behind bars, where her extravagant lifestyle was replaced by a routine that included strict schedules and limited freedom. Friends and family members reported that Pat struggled with the loss of her previous life, feeling both abandoned and vindicated by the jury's decision. Meanwhile, Robert Bobby Michelson, Pat's former financial advisor, faced his own challenges following the trial. Bobby's business suffered due to the negative attention from the case. He had lost his job with Pat, and the fallout from the trial left him financially unstable. Resentful of Pat and the way she treated him during their relationship, Bobby was left with a bitter taste. As the months passed, he found some solace in his personal life. Surprisingly, Deborah Brunn, Pat's estranged daughter, reached out to Bobby. The two formed an unlikely bond fueled by their shared resentment toward Pat and the life she had led. Eventually, they fell in love and decided to marry in early 2023. Despite their complicated histories, Deborah, who had previously expressed deep anger toward her mother, felt a mix of relief and sadness after Pat's conviction. She divorced her husband shortly after the trial and turned her attention to building a new life with Bobby. Together, they moved into a modest apartment in Henderson, where they tried to distance themselves from the shadows of their past. While some friends and family disapproved of their relationship, Deborah insisted she had found happiness with Bobby, seeing him as a way to escape the turmoil of her upbringing. As for Pat, she kept a low profile in prison, reportedly spending her days reflecting on her life choices. In interviews with other inmates, she expressed feelings of isolation, claiming that she never intended for her life to end up this way. 
Reports indicated that she spent time volunteering and participating in prison programs to help other women, hoping to turn her life around once released. The stories of Pat, Bobby, and Deborah highlighted the lasting impact of the tragic events, as each person grappled with the consequences of their decisions in their own way. If you enjoyed the video then make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out any other latest videos.